Chapter four, season two starts tomorrow, and this is everything you need to know. Before we get into talking about all the leaks, I wanna talk about the official teasers Epic just dropped today, because there are two of them and they look ridiculous. We have this image. There is more to explore beyond the walls, hashtag Fortnite Mega. And if you don't watch Attack on Titans, that is an Attack on Titans reference. You can see Eren Jaeger in the middle, but look at the POI. This is what I've been talking about. Even if you don't like anime, you don't like Attack on Titan, tell me that POI does not look so incredibly insane. Like playing through this, running around this, fighting at it is going to be absolutely ridiculous. I'll hazard to say, unless they mess this up, this is going to be one of the best POIs we have ever seen. I know you're probably thinking, Ozzy, that's just the image. There's no way it'll look that cool in game. Well, luckily for us, the second tease of Fortnite just dropped is ridiculous. I'll roll it now. You can go back and watch that again in case you missed it, but it showed off the new PY, a whole bunch of new skins. It showed the grind railing I'm gonna talk about later. It showed the new pistol that's been leaked. It showed a new shotgun that could potentially be the reworked pump shotgun. But again, I'll talk about that later in the video, but there is no way you can watch that and not get hyped for the new season. This has the potential to be one of the best seasons of all time. And Fortnite is going all out. There is already more official teasers in the last few days than I've probably seen in the last few seasons. Epic is generating the hype and I think with good reason. We even have Epic game devs replying to this tweet saying this is what some of the most excited times they've ever been to show off a new season. It's looking insane. Now let's talk about weapons. Let's talk about the classic pump shotgun returning to the new season. This is 100% confirmed. There are rumors it's going to be reworked a little bit. I hope they don't rework it too much. I am really excited to see the pump shotgun come back to the game. The thunder shotgun's nice. It does good consistent damage. It feels fluid to use when it comes to editing and shooting. But the main complaint a lot of people have is the clip size and the reload time. Only having four shots and how long it takes you to reload even a single shot, it really makes it hard to have those fluid quick engagements, especially if you're versing more than one person at a time. So I'm really excited to get my hands back on the classic pump shotgun. Now, the next big leak is if you guys didn't see, the new season is going to do a huge collaboration with Attack on Titans. Don't worry if you don't like anime or you don't follow anime, all you need to know is that is going to be insanely cool for the gameplay. If you don't care about anime, it won't matter. We are having ODM gear come to the game. And basically ODM gear is like a reskinned grappler, but it's gonna have some new mechanics. It has been leaked. There is going to be different elements of the ODM gear that you're going to find around the map, as well as fuel. You're actually going to have to get the fuel to put in the gear to make it work. If you don't follow the anime itself, it's kind of fueled off like air pressure and you need to refuel it to keep using it. This could be a really cool mechanic in the game because instead of just running out of uses like a normal grappler, maybe if you go to run out of uses, but then you kill someone, you then take the fuel they're carrying and then you have more, which could be a very exciting mechanic for competitive as well. One of the the biggest issues people have with grapple metas is you can just grapple box, grapple box, grapple box, never fight anyone and just get free placement. Whereas now if the grappler is dependent on actually getting eliminations to keep the fuel going, I think that could be really, really exciting and fun to see how it affects competitive. As far as the shockwave hammer, are we going to keep it? Is it going to go? We don't really know just yet. In case you missed it, the shockwave hammer was actually vaulted yesterday due to a glitch. If you walked up to the rift gate and used the hammer, the entire server crashed. So they vaulted it and replace that quest with different quests that don't need the shockwave hammer. So I don't see how a medieval shockwave hammer with all this like ore around the map is going to fit into a futuristic vibe season, especially if we've already confirmed a major part of mobility. If we had these ODM gear grapplers and shockwave hammers, I feel like that might be a little bit ridiculous. We do have two brand new weapons also being leaked. We have the rope and chain grenade launcher and the smart pistol. The rope and chain grenade launcher kind of makes me think of C 
of Thieves, if you ever played it, where you shoot kind of like a, like you chain shot their mast and it falls over. I don't know how that's going to work in Fortnite. Maybe it'll wrap people up and like they can't move or maybe it's just used to break structures. Maybe it'll like ram through builds and destroy them instantly. And the Smart Pistol is kind of like an auto lock pistol, which has me a little bit concerned, but I imagine if it auto locks on, it's not going to do crazy damage, hopefully. I already talked about in the intro, let's talk about the new mechanics. We have wall running and double jumping coming to the game. We're not entirely sure whether these are going to be an augment. It seems like a lot of leakers think the double jumping specifically will be an augment. I don't know how to feel about these. I want to be worried because wall running and double jumping sounds insanely strong, but I was worried about sliding, sprinting, mantling, and now I can't imagine playing Fortnite without those mechanics. So I have to give Epic benefit of the doubt here that they will do a good job implementing these. Double jumping especially is is going to be super broken, but will be really nice for no builds. It's still, no matter how many mechanics they add to the game, it does feel a bit, a little bit awkward getting around the map when it comes to no builds. Double jumping could help this massively. It being a futuristic season though, there might only be certain areas you can double jump. Maybe you have to jump off a specific pad. It might not just be, you can just run and double jump whenever you want, but these new mechanics being added to the game has me incredibly excited. And I'm also excited that I don't think it'll affect controller players too much. And I say that because the more and more things we add to Fortnite, controller players are just completely running out of keybinds. They are literally having to give up like emoting or giving up, you know, being able to use voice chat. They are slowly implementing double binds to kind of fix this. But if they keep adding too much stuff that requires keybinds, controller is just going to be awful. But I can't imagine either of these will need a new keybind. Hopefully it's kind of like mantling where you just jump and hold it and you wall run or double jumping. You just press jump twice, I imagine. Another major change to the game you've probably seen is the addition of first person. This was accidentally leaked this season where it was in the game and it was way, way too polished to be a glitch. This was definitely not just an accident. First person is 100% coming to the game and the leakers seem to believe it's coming next season. Now, my thoughts on first person is I will never use this outside of no builds. I can't even imagine trying to play builds Fortnite in first person, like the motion sickness, the lack of awareness, it would just be so overwhelming, especially combined with with a grapple item. Can you imagine like grappling and flipping and it's first, like you're gonna wanna throw up. But in no builds, it could be quite fun. I've played a lot of battle royales in my time. I've played a lot of PUBG. And when it was first person versus third person, I always picked first person. The ability to not be able to just peek around a wall or over a fence and they can't see you is so much nicer to play with. If someone wants to shoot you and they wanna see you, they have to be looking at you where you can return fire. If you get a bad zone and the enemy gets a rock or they get a hill or they get a tree, in first person that is nowhere near as punishing as what it is in third person so i'm excited to see how this plays out i think it'll also bring a lot of old players or new players to the game just to try this out so it should be a very very cool change for fortnite my only concern and this goes off PUBG as well is if you have to play first person or third person do you queue into a different game mode because can you imagine if there is now solos duos trios squads you know third person solos duos trios squads first person, then you've got zero build solos duos. You see where I'm going with this. It's really going to split up the queue times and it could mess things up, but I'm sure Fortnite's thought about this. I'm sure they have something in mind. Maybe it's just a setting that you toggle on or off if you prefer it, but then I don't know if I'd ever used first person when I'm playing against people who I know are using third person because they are at such a big advantage. So we'll have to see how they implement this one, but I do think it will be an exciting change for the game. One of my favorite additions to chapter four is the augments, and it looks like they're sticking around. Not the specific augments we have now, but the whole concept of augments. We're going to be getting a bunch of new ones coming into the new season, including legendary augments. So it looks like we might be getting a reboot, respawn on death, which could kind of be like a self-revive, like in Apex Legends or in like Call of Duty, a shield increase and siphon. Now, the way they said siphon there makes me think that maybe legendary augments will only be in public matches or no builds and won't actually be in the competitive playlist because there already is Siphon. We'll have to see, but it makes me incredibly excited to know that Augments are staying in the game. I hope they can still continue to balance Augments throughout the season. I feel like there were a couple like Danger Hero and Forecast that stayed a little bit too broken for too long. Even after they updated them, they were still really strong, but not as broken. I just wish they would be a little bit quicker with the updates, but the whole concept around Augments, I think is really, really fun. And it's also been a great way for them to add things into pubs versus competitive and still 
that will make it feel fluid by just not having those augments in competitive. It's some of the best loot splitting we've had between public matches and competitive, and I think it's because of the augments. So I'm very excited to see what they come up with, and I think if they keep this going where every new season just gets new augments, it'll always make it feel incredibly fresh and fun. I've already talked about the futuristic vibes of the season, and along with that, we are going to see new futuristic vehicles. And these were originally leaked in the Fortnite Kid Leroy experience, and FN Assist has done a great job of pointing out these would fit perfectly into the new season. And I personally love having vehicles in the game. I think they're amazing, they're super fun. They do need to do something to balance them in competitive, because I hope they do go into competitive. We have had a lot of issues in the past of trucks just plowing through endgame, but I think that can be easily fixed with some just updates it's like maybe the vehicles turn off after fifth zone. They are way easier to destroy. Maybe they just don't break bills as easily as they currently do. I think there's a lot of ways you can incorporate vehicles into competitive without being absurdly broken, but I'm excited to see them in the game nonetheless. And another vehicle we have confirmed is the futuristic motorbikes. And this is actually in the new demos and trailers that Fortnite are posting right now. So 100%, we are getting these futuristic motorbikes and what looks like kind of like a, a Tron bike. Like, I don't know if this will be like a super fast legendary bike, kind of like we used to have with the stock cars. But either way, having more ways to get around the map between the grind rails and the vehicles, I'm all for that. I'm usually not one to focus too much on cosmetics, but the new style they're going with with the cosmetics leak so far is incredibly cool. It's fitting this whole futuristic Japanese vibe. And I'm excited to see the fact that outside of Attack on Titan, which is personally an anime I love, there's not really any collabs in the battle pass. It's rumored that Eren Yeager, the main character of Attack on Titan, is going to be the secret skin in the battle pass. But outside of that, it looks like we're mostly getting new skins in the battle pass, which I love. I, as much as I love characters, I love movies, I just get really like a little bit disappointed when I check the battle pass and it's just full of collaboration characters from movies and shows that I already know, which if I really wanted, I would just buy. For me, the battle pass should always be Fortnite skins, like true, new, unique Fortnite skins that fit that season's vibes. Like I think back to some of my favorite seasons, like chapter one, season seven, the pirate season, and the skins reflected that. You had like pirate fish sticks, you had the pirate. Like it just felt really cool and it makes me have more of an attachment to those seasons. And I really like the fact that it looks like Epic is going back to their old ways with that and creating what do look like some pretty cool skins. Now, there's probably some crazy new stuff that I also missed. I tried to grab all the main leaks and condense it into as quick of a video as I can for you guys. The new season is kicking off tomorrow. If you want to ring it in with the good vibes, check out my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Antics. I'm going to be doing a super long stream, looking at all the leaks, watching the trailer, and then jumping into the new season as soon as it drops. I'm also going to be giving away a whole bunch of V-Bucks on that stream throughout it in case you guys want to pick up the new battle pass or any of the cool new stuff with the season. Hope you enjoyed today's video, though. If you did, please chuck a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.